Hey, what's up guys, John here. Mortgage applications, the activity index falls the lowest in 22 years. In 22 years, they go on to say that weakness in both purchases and refi applications push the market composite index a measure of mortgage loan application volume to its lowest in 22 years, the Mortgage Banker Association said today, right? Down 22 years from the high, right? What is this gonna look like? I think a couple of very interesting things are occurring right now that most people aren't looking at, most people aren't talking about, because everyone's so caught and fixated on inflation. They're so concerned about inflation that they want to run out and invest. At least that was the trend about a year ago. And now that's slowly kind of getting pulled out of the market. Now people are getting a little bit more concerned. But we're looking at the real debt levels of household Americans. It weren't levels that we've never been in ever in history. And this debt is only likely going to continue. Why do I say this? Well, everything is getting much more expensive. Real inflation, people would argue, between 20 and 40%. Used cars are up 40 and 45% last year. It's unbelievable. Gas prices up 80% in the last 12 months. And it's only going to continue to soar. Everything is getting much more expensive. When people don't have the cash, what do they do? They pull out their credit card and they just swipe. They just charge. What option is there? If they're hungry, they have access to credit, they're going to swipe the card now and try to figure it out later, right? And this is how bad situa the situation is. But I think that we could be stepping into a unique shift, a very unique situation in which potentially this bubble doesn't pop today. Instead, it pops in six months or in five months. But when it does pop, it's going to be massive. Here's the one caveat, the one reason in which maybe maybe this economy ends up getting pushed out, right? But we could still see some massive fear. So if we look at this, just the last hour, I'm gonna refresh it, because every hour it's, yeah, they're adding different things, right? They said that it can now go through the air, right? Before it was not like that, but now they say it can go through the air, right? Now they're saying there's 1,000 of them, right? But they go on to say it's a real risk, a real risk. And if it's a real risk, right? And they're having all these different things. I mean, this, there's three pages in the last one hour, right? So if that's what they're saying, then there could be a situation in which they say, you know what, we need to, you know, maybe issue more stimulus. We need to issue more assistance. And if that does happen, then the credit card defaults are gonna change. People are gonna be able to pay down their balances a little bit more. And maybe the bubble doesn't pop immediately, right? But that's, that's a very big if, that's a very big if. Here's what we know for sure. Americans ramp up credit card usage as high prices continue to bite. Americans are continuing to lean on credit cards and loans as consumer credit surged $38 billion in April, amid the highest inflation in 40 years. The latest Federal Reserve data on outstanding, outstanding consumer credit released Tuesday afternoon comes after March's record increase of $52.4 billion. That figure has since revised downward to $47.3 billion. Revolving credit, which mostly includes credit card balances, grew at an annualized rate of 19.6 and totaled $1.103 trillion in April, just breaking a pre-pandemic record of $1.1 trillion. But Record high revolving debt isn't all bad news. I love how they can shift this to make this a good thing. It's not bad news, right? He says, the senior analyst says, some of this reflects rising consumer spending, which is good for the economy, of course, and also like population growth and increased credit card usage rather than cash. Now people, they charge for the most part, charge on credit cards and have revolving balances and they decide that they have no option but to pay 20 or 30% interest because they don't have the cash right now to pay it off. So they charge it on their credit card and figure it out later. That's why we have $1.103 trillion. For example, me, I have multiple different credit cards. I use them all the time and I always have a balance, but I always pay them off, right? I paid them off. I live below my means. You know, I'm, I'm fortunate in that regard, right? But a lot of people are not. They charge it and they can only make the minimum payments, right? So they end up paying two or three X for one item than they otherwise would have, you know, been able to avoid. But they're saying that this could potentially be a good thing for the economy, right? We had a sharp and quick decline in credit card balances because of stimulus. And that's exactly why I was referencing this because of stimulus. If this thing does become a problem and they start printing more and more and more money, then it's going to change everything. The pandemic, because people spent less and they also paid off debt, but also it could change everything for landlords. If eviction moratoriums come back, it could change things for, uh, for all businesses. If we start to see these restrictions come back into the economy and more stimulus, then what we could likely see is a world of hurt down the road, a world of hurt down the road. And now 
we're seeing an equally sharp run back, much faster than something like we like the financial crisis when it took five years to find the bottom and five more years to climb back up. Despite feeling some unease about the direction of the economy, consumers have continued to spend. Well, they have no option, right? They have no option. If things cost 20% more and they've only seen a 3.5% increase in their pay, and you know they're essentially being forced to take a 17 or 18 percent reduction in their lifestyle due to inflation what are they going to do they're going to have to spend they still they're whatever the cost is going to cost them they're going to have to spend however the goods they're buying especially the essentials have seen sharp price increases amid a period of high inflation that spending especially when it involves credit card debt can be a sign of confidence or it can be a sign of concern Right, this credit card chief analyst at Lending Tree previously told CNN Business some retailers have already noticed this split in how people are spending. High earners have continued to buy luxury and pricier items, while lower income consumers are eschewing the discretionary for the essentials and cheaper ones for that. The monthly Fed credit report doesn't provide detailed breakouts of how credit is being used or whether outstanding balances are paid off before interest rates start to accrue. So the record of consumer credit levels might not be as negative as they seem. Some of this just reflects more card usage, more e-com, more digital payments, people using cash less, he said. In some respects, high credit card balances can reflect the growing economy. You don't just want to grow so much that people are falling behind and carrying expensive debt. The growing economy. This isn't an economy. We live in, we're, we're in a house of cards. This economy is built on sand. It's built on you know, at one time it was built on uh, pure capitalism, you know, an exchange of value. One person has something to sell, one person has money. They realize that the item that this person's selling is worth a lot more to this person. They end up doing the trade and the economy happens, right? That's how essentially how business is done, it's commerce. But what they've done is restructured commerce and they've basically just given money and given value or a means of value through fiat currency to the people for providing very little nothing really and so what's ultimately happened people are staying home they were getting checks now all this credit card debt is building and building and building this is not just going to go away this is a massive problem over a trillion 1.1 trillion in outstanding credit card debt if they do print this stimulus i promise you what's ultimately going to happen is people are going to take that money like they did before and just go out and spend it then leverage it, not just spend the thousand bucks or 1200 bucks they get, they'll go buy something for two grand and they'll put a thousand dollars down or $500 down. Like that's essentially what's happening. We're building out this debt society. For example, I bought a couple pairs of shoes online at a store the other day and they were asking if I wanted to finance the shoes. The shoes are 70 bucks. They wanted me to finance it for 19 bucks a month, right? To finance these shoes for $19 a month. This is what we're stepping into. We're, we're stepping into a debt-ridden society where you're financing, financing, financing everything. And I don't think that this is gonna end well, but I'm curious, how do you see this ending? How do you see this whole situation unfolding? Drop your comments below, hit the like button, subscribe, and also subscribe to my second YouTube channel. It's gonna be an interactive show and a podcast. If you wanna get on the YouTube grind with me, do YouTube videos with me, join a private community, cashnow.video. If you wanna invest in real estate when this credit bubble pops, when the market changes, we're gonna be stepping into a big problem soon, cashnow.video. If you need help with your credit, cashnow.video. LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, everything is in the batter, and I will catch you guys 